Okay, today we want to talk about the concept of work, which has a very specific meaning in physics. Uh, work is the amount of energy that you expend when you push something with a force over a certain distance. So you can think of it as the amount of energy needed to change the motion of an object by applying a force. Uh, so we can write that down. You know, imagine we've got a object being pushed with a certain amount of force over a certain distance, the total amount of energy required to push that object over that distance is going to be the force applied uh, dotted into the distance. Now this is the dot product. And that dot product comes about because it depends on whether or not the force is aligned with the direction you're pushing it or not. Um, for example, if I have that same object and instead of pushing it horizontally across like that, I pull up in that direction. Well, that's at an angle between the distance that's being pulled and the force that's being applied. And so the dot product comes in because that is the component that is being applied along the direction of motion, assuming this box isn't being lifted up. So that's the... Uh, the force applied in that direction of motion, that's the only force that's causing this object to accelerate because the vertical component of the force isn't doing anything to accelerate the object. And so if you look at the trigonometry there, um, this component down here is just F cosine theta. And so then if I apply uh, my principle of work that I'm applying this force in the horizontal distance, which is the direction of motion, and this is my distance d, then I just get f d cosine theta, and that's the dot product between those two vectors. So in the case of work direction matters, you know, you can think about it in the limit if I've got uh, an object that's, you know, let's say it's on, on a track here and it can't lift up, you know, it's on some kind of track here, and I'm pulling straight up, that's not going to cause it to move left or right. And the angle between the vector that I'm pulling and the direction of motion is 90 degrees, and so the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, so I have no, there's no work being applied to that. <clears throat> okay, so that's the whole concept of work that we want to look at today, and I want to do some examples um, to illustrate that. I should point out that you know, what work is doing is it's changing the, uh, the velocity or the speed of the object. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, if you've got to work, if, you've, if you're doing work to accelerate something, um, that's going to increase its speed. If you're doing work to decelerate something, that's going to decrease its speed. Um, and so we often talk about work done on an object or work done by an object, depending on the sign. So there is going to be a sign to the work, whether um, it's uh, putting energy into the object we're interested in or taking energy out of the object we're interested in. And we'll see that when we work on uh, a few of our um, problems here. Okay, the other thing I want to do is introduce the concept of kinetic energy. And this is the amount of energy that is uh, associated with the motion of an object. Um, it's, it's proportional to the velocity squared and it has to do with its mass. Um, so I want to see where that comes from. Um, so let's take, for the sake of argument, we've got a, um, a ball. And we're going to drop it from some position under constant acceleration of gravity to some other position right there. And we want to know um, how is the distance it falls related to the velocity. Um, so I'm going to go and write down my kinematics equations. I get x final is equal to x initial plus v initial t minus 1 half g t squared. And then I also have my equation for my velocity, which says that the initial velocity plus or minus g t is going to be equal to the final velocity. Now in this case, I'm going to start this at x equals 0. Um, and then we're going to go to xf down here. 
and my initial velocity is also going to be zero. So that's going to go away, that's going to go away, and that's going to go away. And I'm going to get these two equations. xf is equal to minus one half gt squared, and then I get vf is equal to minus gt squared, gt. So now I'm going to go take, solve this equation for t and put it in here. And if I do that, this is just t is equal to uh, minus vf over g. So this becomes minus 1 half g minus vf over g squared. One of those factors of g is going to go away. So I get a g down here, and then I get a vf squared up there. And that's what my final position is equal to. So we can tell that how far it falls is going to be proportional to how fast it's going at the end. So let's um, explore that a little bit further. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this g and move it over here and multiply the whole equation by m. So I'm going to get mg x final is equal to minus 1 half mv squared final. And then uh, I'm going to take this minus sign and move it over here. And now I have on the right hand side a positive expression for uh, the velocity for a change in the position over here. Now this change in position is negative because of the way I have my uh, coordinate system and I'm losing energy as I fall down here. In other words, the, there's a, this object has a certain amount of what we call potential energy up here. That's represented by this side. So this is my potential energy. And on the right hand side, we have something that's related to the velocity, and this is what we call our kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is proportional to the mass, it's proportional to the uh, velocity squared, and it tells us how much of this initial energy that was embodied in the gravitational pull of the Earth has been translated from uh, the energy stored in the potential energy of gravity to the motion of the object. So this is going to come in handy, this kinetic energy expression, because it's a way of describing how, and usually we call this K, it's a way of describing how energy is stored in motion. And we'll see how we use that in a couple of examples coming up.